Three things are certain in life. Death, taxes, and the fact that JavaScript developers are always struggling to keep up with the ecosystem changes. They went from browser wars to framework wars, we are now deep into runtime wars, and this will probably end up with a full-blown Star Wars. The release of Dino and Ban runtimes kicked off this new phase, pushing Node.js to evolve faster than it has in years. As a result, Node was forced to rethink how server-side JavaScript should look in a world dominated by modern web standards and fierce competition. The ecosystem went through big transformations recently, so if you are not familiar with the new modern development patterns in Node, you are in for a big surprise. The biggest wake-up call for anyone coming from older Node projects is the module system. CommonJS modules have been with us since the early days, but they have had limitations. No static analysis or tree shaking was possible on these modules, and more importantly, the system doesn't align with the current browser standards. Modern Node defaults to ES modules with one very important addition. The Node prefix for built-in modules makes it clear where your imports are coming from, avoiding subtle bugs where a third-party package shadows a core module. It is also worth mentioning that Node supports dynamic imports, so you can load modules at runtime instead of having to include everything up front. This gives you flexibility for things like conditional loading, based on configuration, feature flags, or even deferring expensive dependencies until they're actually needed. But one of the features that I'm the most excited about, which is also long overdue, is the support for top-level await. So, no more wrapping your entire application in an async function just to use await at the module level. This eliminates the common pattern of immediately invoked async function expressions that we used to see everywhere, so your code becomes cleaner and easier to understand. The Node team also realized that aligning to web standards more closely is a must if they want to avoid developers jumping ship to other runtimes. So it was time to cut down the dependency bloat that's been haunting JavaScript projects for years. One of the priorities was to add native support for Fetch API, so now you don't need that ever-present Axios or Node Fetch dependency just to make an HTTP request. You get Fetch out of the box, with additional features like abort signal for timeouts and cancellations right in the core runtime. Another big dev experience improvement is targeting the management of async flows. Between callback hell, promise chains, and nested async functions, even simple tasks could get messy fast. Modern Node encourages the use of promise all and async await patterns that make parallel and sequential tasks easier to manage and reason about. But these updates go beyond quality of life improvements. JavaScript's single-threaded nature isn't always ideal for CPU-intensive work, and worker threads provide a way to leverage multiple cores effectively while maintaining the simplicity of JavaScript. So you can offload heavy computations without freezing your entire application, which used to be one of Node's biggest pain points. You can now spin up workers directly in JavaScript, and they will run in isolated threads, communicate through messages, and handle CPU-bound tasks in parallel, all while your main event loop stays responsive. And the evolution didn't stop at raw performance. Modern Node also addresses testing, a long-overlooked part of the developer workflow. The built-in test runner gives you a clean API, built-in watch mode, and even experimental coverage reports. This eliminates the need for third-party tools just to get basic testing working, so you can write and run tests with nothing but Node itself, which keeps projects leaner and avoids the dependency sprawl that testing libraries often bring. Streams, one of Node's core strengths, also got the attention they deserved. The Pipeline API wraps streams in a promise-based interface that automatically manages errors and cleanup, removing a major source of frustration in older versions of Node where stream errors could crash entire apps if mishandled. Combined with support for web streams, Node now allows you to create or consume streams that work the same way in browsers and on the server, which is essential for apps running in hybrid or edge environments. So, you get the point. Node has the firepower and the motivation to stay relevant even today, and it is still a tool worth checking out. Let me know in the comments what's your preferred JS runtime these days, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, thank you for watching.